Yeah. No, I mean, I, that's in a way, that's the stuff that I find fascinating is the the kind of side effect and knock on effect of what is essentially, a, you know, not that a new, you know, there were electric cars in 1908. There were more electric cars in 1908 than there were petrol cars. So it's not like new technology, but what it's doing now, this sort of second generation, is changing so many things about how we produce energy, how we consume it, who owns it, how centralized it is. Do we rely on, you know, one big company generating all the electricity and we all depend on them? That those sort of monopoly positions that we've lived, we've all grown up with. The same with the, you know, with our fuel. You can't fuel a combustion car with anything other than gasoline or, mm -hmm. or diesel, but you can fuel an electric car with electricity from anywhere. It doesn't matter. It doesn't give a toss. If you use burn coal and generate electricity like that, it'll still work in an electric car. And if you use solar, it'll still work. You know, car mm -hmm. doesn't care. I was thinking of it like a teenage kid. Doesn't care where the food comes from. Just give it food. <laughs> that's, that's how my kids were, darling. I want to explain to you the ethical sourcing of this of this salad we made. Shut up! I just want to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> just give me the gummy worms. Yes. I'll, I'll eat it. I don't care. It's carcinogens, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I'm immortal. <laughs> I'm a teenager. Um, yeah. Well, so so what was the thing that that got you so? Um, I mean, you were talking about like being in, in California and seeing a Prius for the first time and that kind of thing. Like, like, was there, was there a moment where you were like, okay, this is what I want to dedicate a YouTube channel to and do live shows for like, what was the switch point for you? Yeah. I don't know. I think it was, I don't, I mean, I, I wish there was one I can, you know, there was a, slow a, progression a moment, over time. but I think it was that I, by then I, so I got a Prius. I was one of the early Prius owners. So I came back from, the united states to, to here and i had a, a, a hot hatchback a golf a golf with a ridiculous truck engine in it it was ridiculous it, terrible <laughs> uh, mpg it was hopeless but very noisy it made a lot of noise it made a nice sound a, a, a r32 golf it's called uh very uncomfortable very quite fast but by today's standards not really fast at all you know i've got a tesla that isn't a performance one it's much faster but anyway uh so i tr and i traded that in for a prius and uh, and uh, well, i was intrigued by then you know that a, a gallon of gas in the uk got me 22 miles in the golf and it got me 72 miles in the prius and i went that is that kind of clicked something that was definitely a moment where i went oh, oh my okay. god and uh you know there's i mean i think the prius is you know a historically important vehicle in that transition uh, i think it's a bit dated now but uh it was a you know it was an amazing change mm -hmm. to suddenly go from someone who is essentially you know was a kind of closet petrol head because i knew it was wrong but i loved it so i you know my brother my brother is uh, a proper engineer who had worked in form building formula one cars for different teams building amazing gearboxes and uh, exhaust manifolds and you know that very much uh, engines and gearboxes was his thing and uh you know so that was in the blood if you like that sure, that, sure. that fascination and then and then to sort of you know an electric car in comparison with the passion of a highly tuned noisy combustion engine an electric car is basically a vacuum cleaner because it's quite boring, you know <laughs> yeah. vroom, vroom, you got that and then you've got yeah. you know it's, <laughs> it's very hard to get that passionate about it but then you sort of it was the air quality thing i think got me okay. that i went you know this does stink and when i still had quite young children then i went this is no, that's not can't be good for them <laughs> i don't know i don't know much about science but i've got a feeling <laughs> this is less than optimal you know that stuff so i think it was a, it was a it was not an overnight thing it was a slow process and i think what there was definitely one a little catalyst was that there was an episode of top gear in the late 90s when it would have been yet yeah, no, no, late uh, 2000, sorry, not the late 2000s, 2008, nine, somewhere around then, where they, they drove uh, the Tesla Roadster. They did the test mm. of the Tesla Roadster. And there was some, you know, it was a scandal. It wasn't a scandal. It was stupid television. But they, <laughs> they said it ran out. The battery ran out. And you, there was footage of the, the crew pushing the car into a, a hangar so they could plug it into a three-pin socket. Uh -huh. And it was going to take two weeks to charge it and uh, you know all that stuff like and then worst but, case scenario possible yeah worst case scenario and actually it later transpired that it hadn't run out of batteries it they'd blown a fuse and they replaced the fuse and it worked again for ages you know so all that stuff but that was irrelevant but what what twisted it was 
they followed that with a review of the Honda Clarity hydrogen fuel cell car in California. James May drove that and said, oh, no, this, this is the future. <laughs> and I knew enough about hydrogen fuel cells, not much about battery, but I knew enough about the hydrogen fuel cells to know he was wrong. <laughs> and that was quite difficult then to think this programme with enormous clout amongst the people who are interested in and buy cars. Yeah. They all then went for the next 15 years, well, hydrogen is the future. There's no hydrogen cars. There's no hydrogen infrastructure. It hasn't worked. It's been a disaster. It's a con job by the fossil fuel industry, but people still do. I, I met a guy last night. He said, oh, these battery cars are interesting, but, I, you know, they're just transition vehicles. I'm waiting for hydrogen. I said, how old are you? Keep he said, waiting. No, I said, you're, uh, you said, yeah, I'm 55. And I said, you, you'll be 120 before you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. That's, but so that was uh, I went and went, well, I know it's when you see something like that, and you go, I know they're wrong. <laughs> I don't think they're wrong. I'm not wondering whether they're wrong. I don't have a different opinion. They're just wrong. And they have an enormous influence. And so I wanted to counter that as well. So that was okay. That was the, maybe the catalyst that really kicked me over to doing something about it. But okay. I mean, that's sort of long forgotten now. So it's kind of irrelevant. And I've driven three hydrogen fuel cell <laughs> cars. They're all brilliant. It's just I couldn't fill them up anywhere. Yeah. And they yeah. were incredibly expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and the Honda I mean, Clarity, I think the Honda Clarity cost Honda about two million pounds a car to build okay. that car, which is why they don't sell them. They only lease them. You can't buy one. Mm. Yeah. So anyway. I mean, yeah. I, I get I the idea behind hydrogen and I think it's interesting, but like like you said, there's was it 15 stations in California or something? And yeah, there may be more than that. I mean the, the thing that I find, you know, the sort of the it's the misunderstanding. I think I would love it to work. I'm not opposed right, to it at all. Right. It'd be fantastic if, you know, if I, when I cycle along a street in a town in the UK, and I'm cycling behind a diesel car, I'd much rather that was a hydrogen car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a lot better. Yeah. Uh, you know, God. You. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, but the the I think the really the question we have to ask is. Uh, where does the hydrogen come from? And, the, and the, the answer is, at the moment, globally, 98%. So, so pretty much all of it is, is steam reformed out of natural gas. Yeah. It's, a, it's a fossil fuel derivative. So, which is, yeah, and it's not bad. It's not that that's bad. And, and the actual use of it is, it is better. But it, that has not been solved. And we have a company in this country that produces hydrogen from wind, from excess wind. And they, they're successful and they've got a lot of investment. And there's a there is a gas station in, in the outside London which has a big wind turbine right next to it, which is only used to split water to produce hydrogen to, to you know so uh, it, electrolysis. It, it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It can be done. But it is an enormous energy loss. If you put yeah. the same power into a car, the car uh, into a battery electric car, the car would it is it is shocking. The, the hydrogen car will do about two and a half miles per four kilowatt hours and a battery electric car will do uh, about 18 to 20 yeah. miles on the yeah. same electricity and you just go there's, there's something wrong there that's yeah. that's not a sensible use of energy but anyway <laughs> <laughs>